Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing excellent results with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Behind the goal, we reset and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Kalani, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, quick for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit, the run will score. And Freshman, pull the check, gets the strike. Anthony Grouso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grouso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. TD Bank Park, home of the Somerset Patriots, <clears throat> as you see it right there with I-287 in the background. And we welcome you to Mari Sussex Sports presentation of high school baseball, the 8 and, a, the eight and 11 West Mars Central Wolf Pack against the 11 and 3 West Mars Men to Minute Men. It's a West Mars battle. Here are Mari Sussex Sports, although we're down in Bridgewater. Brett Luther, Sean Bretherick here with you in... Uh, should be a fun one here today. Should be a lot of fun. Both these teams, very, very, very close. Crosstown rivals of each other. Um, don't let the record of of Westmore Central fool you. This is a team that can ease, that can, that really can come to play against Mendham, a team that's only lost three games all season long. But Westmore, you know, you circle that, you circle games like this on your calendar. Mm. And I've seen, I've seen it where. You know, they were eight, where they've been able to. As a matter of fact, one of Menden's three losses on the season against Westmore against Westmore Central. That happened back in early April on the 11th, to be exact. Um, this is the second matchup between the two, obviously. And uh, should be an interesting one, as you said. So I'm looking forward to see uh, how, uh, how Mendham handles this one. Um, knowing that they dropped their last game, they've only lost three games. 
Right. And it was one of them was to these guys. So the, motiva- good- the motivation is going to be there, too. And Mendham had a good county game the last time out. Mm. Uh, it, it was a little bit of a back and forth affair when we look at Mendham's results uh, so far in the season. Uh, yes, as you mentioned, 11 and 3 for them. And that included a Morris County tournament uh, thrillers, a pair of them, 9 8 against mm. Jefferson and 8 7 against Hanover Park. So it's it's not as though. You know, yes, it's 11-3, and three, but boy, oh boy, have, uh, they had some nip and tuck games lately. Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle for them uh, the last week or so. You can see here, they've lost by, they've lost, they've won or lost one-run games. All of the yep. other last four games are by one run. Um, so, games have been tight for them, no matter who they've played. They lost two straight against Knowles, Morris Knowles and Morris Hills. Um, they're separate in, in baseball, not, not like in hockey. Uh, Jefferson, and then they were able to beat Jefferson, but the last two games to me, Brett, it would tell me that they simply put just got the job done those mm. those those last two games in in a big, you know, in a big spot, in big spots here. So, um, you know, I think it's I, I think it's important to note that as well for men. And, and before that, they had themselves a nineteen to one drubbing of Hills, only to lose to them two games later. So it's it's not as if you know, I mean. It's 11 and 3 but as you mentioned Sean they're finding ways to win games. Yeah, that's what winning teams do, right? I mean, right. You, when you when you're when you get into a bit of a skid, right? You get you go into a little slide. Good teams, winning teams say have that ability to take a step back and say, "Okay, hold on a second guys. Let's not let's not completely fall down the rabbit hole here." Right. We're an 11 we are a well at the point at that time there was a 9 and 3 team. Mhm. And then they went to the to the tournament and said, yeah, it was still a bit of a struggle. But you were able to score eight and nine and eight runs in those two games. In a seven game, that's not that's not easy to do. Okay. Right. And I don't care what level you're playing. Um, to me, I think that's impressive. And I think we'll see how they play tonight. And, and you know, it's easy to get out of bed to face to face your crosstown rival. And I expect a lot of emotion from both sides. And I think right. this is gonna be a great recipe for a fantastic matchup. Um, I think some, I think in some cases in big rivalry games, I, you, sometimes you don't, you just throw, throw everything that's happened the last few games for both these teams out the window, right? Cause sometimes you just forget about it. Um, but you know, we'll see how things transpire obviously. And, uh, yeah, here's the lineup as the Minutemen have taken the field, the West Mars central Wolfpack lineup here this evening. Evan Turner leads off. He's the third baseman. Uh, batting second is Nick Dotro, and he's playing uh, shortstop. Alex Diaz, the center fielder, hitting third. John Raleigh bats fourth. He is the catcher. In the five spot is Sebastian Ecker, and he's in right field. Uh, Matt Healy bats sixth. He's on the mound today. Uh, Joe Bartnicki is the designated hitter for Tyler Kopech, the second baseman. So Bartnicki is in the seventh spot. Michael Ferry at first base, hitting eighth. And Sean Smith bats ninth. And he is the left fielder. They are going up against Matt Heary wearing the uh, heat whip. Calather. No, oh, they're going up against Calather. All right, my bad. I, 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 I see what you did there. Uh, they're going up against Calather. Uh, Jay Calather, nine innings pitched on the season. He's allowed one run, seven hits, walked four, struck out 12. My bad. Yeah, I you, just realized that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> that's a, how I wrote it on, on a score sheet myself. Yeah. But, yeah, that's... Oops. You're good. You're good. Sorry about that. I'm not expecting six pitchers in the game today. Yeah, I know. Both these teams are going to be on their game. Like I said, you know, it's like it doesn't matter. Like, and it's a Giants and Eagles game, right? Some in, in, in NFL, if I had to do a comparison, it doesn't matter how good or bad one team is. The team, the matchup, always seemingly is a good, is always going to be a tight matchup, no matter what. That's what this. That's what this is going to bring. The heart will be on the sleeves for oh, this crosstown so- rival matchup. Oh, yeah. And a bunch of people have come out for this one. First pitch, and it's a bouncer right back to the mound. And Calther gathers and fires the first in time. One pitch, and Turner retired one away. Now that is number two, Nick Dutro. Nick Dutro now the batter. 
Dutra on the season, 8 for 20. It's a 400 average. 20 at-bats, according to our stats, it's courtesy of NJ.com. He's got two runs, scored three doubles in those eight hits. He's walked five times, got five runs scored as well. He's got a 1-0 count here. The pitch is hit hard, a one-hopper to short. Gathered and thrown across the diamond in time. And there's two away. Tim Winters with that play. Defensively, Frank Contoli is in left field. The center fielder is Will Schlegel. And in right field, it's the uh, Jack Leah is in right field today. Around the infield, it, uh, we'll get to in a moment. As Calther is ready to go. First pitch coming in. Is an uh, off-speed pitch for a strike, nothing in one. The Brian Reuter is at third base. Over at shortstop is Tim Winters. The 0-1, fisted foul back and wow. towards the screen, and nothing in two. That knuckled. Yeah. It looked like, I thought that was that, that was your mark for my camera. I thought. Noah Ashker is at second base. And over at first base is Jack Warman. 0-2. Oh, Hit hard to the left side again. Winters on a hop. Throws on across the diamond in time. And the side is retired on three ground outs. Three up, three down. Go the Wolf Pack. We've played half an inning. Central nothing. Mendham coming to bat here on Mars Sussex Sports. In Andover, Blairstown, Byram. Frankford, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Water TD Bank Ballpark. We want to thank, by the way, Nick Chirillo of the Somerset Patriots uh, for being so accommodating and hosting us here this evening. Nick Vid. Yep. You don't know if nobody understands that one. That's okay. That's that's a Patriots thing. When they were independent, when they were independent, Nick had a little bit more time on his hands, and he was able to do some really fun promotional Great. videos. Here's the, the lineup for Mendham while we got Noah Ashker, the second baseman, leads off. Tim Winters at shortstop, batting second. Frank Contoli, the left fielder, hits third. Uh, batting fourth is uh, Jack Warman, and he is the first baseman. Brian Reuter at third base, bats fifth. Sean Caddo is the catcher, batting sixth. Frank Violet, the designated hitter for the pitcher, uh, Jay Calter, bats seventh. Will Schlegel hits eighth. He's the center fielder. Jack Leah hitting ninth. He's in right field going up against the Matt Healy. number, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, number Matt nine. Healy, number nine. We'll get you his numbers in a moment. First pitch, swing and a miss to ask you nothing in one. Healy on the season, seven and two-thirds innings pitched, four hits, six runs. They're all earned. He's walked eight, struck out just two. I hear the Raritan Valley line coming through. Yep. That goes right through my town. Sean can play, practically sneeze on this stadium. Fisted to the right side and a grab and foul ground by the first baseman, Ferry. And there's one away. Good play, Michael Ferry. A Haas Cup championship to his name, back to back. He's an athlete. You know what he was a JV as a freshman? He was a goalie. So he knows how to get down. Yeah. And he just showed it there. 
some hockey championships amongst this game. Mendham, of course, winning the Halvers Cup. Cups galore. One away for Tim Winters. Here's the first pitch. Chopped to the mound. Picking up is Healy. Throws on across in time. Two away. So two up, two down for Matt Healy. Now batting number five, Brent Well, I think learning learning now about uh, who just made it out. That was Winters just um, getting out there. So I can tell he's the batter now. Frank, right? First pitch to Frank Contelli is in the knees for a strike and a count nothing in one. I think I'm going to learn that when I when I'm giving directions hmm. to the young to the young kids and they listen and they and they and they improve as they go. I think that's going to make me feel that much more better. I'll tell you what, Sean, uh, the shadow is going to play at some point. By the way, Frank. 17 for 43 on the season. 15 runs batted in. And he hits this one to first. Easy grab for Ferry. Takes it to the bag, and it's a very quick one, two, three inning on five pitches. We've played one. It's scoreless between Central and Mendham here on our Sussex Sports. At Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. We offer a variety of products and automotive services to enhance your vehicle's performance. Our mission is simple. We never promise more than we can deliver and we always give the customer more than they expect. Because at Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. Please call us for a quote or service question at 973-377-1915. Don't forget to tune into the wrap up report every Tuesday night, every Thursday night, I should say, right here on Morris Sussex Sports. 6 p.m. Highlights, reviews, previews of everything going on. That's the Morris Sussex Sports wrap up report. Thursday nights, 6 p.m., right here on Morris Sussex Sports. John Rowley will lead things off here in the second of a scoreless game. 19 out of 57 on the season with 18 runs batted in. Mm. Five doubles on the campaign. That's playing the game on easy mode in a way. There's a couple guys that have got some some good stuff here. And, and to Calather's credit, he's pitching around him. He doesn't want him. He, you know, there's guys that you don't want to want you to uh, want to beat, uh, have to beat you. He's one of them. Mm. It took me a minute to get that out, but yep. you know what I meant. Counts two and one on the strike there. Here's the wind and Calther's pitch. Lifted in the air right field. That's going to slice foul and out of play. It's about six rows back in the second level of seats, and the count's now two and two. Are you sure about that? That's where I think that's where the lawn seating used to be. Is where that went. Uh, it crashed into some seats. I can tell you. That. Oh, it did. Yes. Okay, it didn't make it. This one lifted out towards left center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit. I wish we had our crowd mic. We pick them up in the background, but it... I can arrange. Okay. First hit of the game goes to the wolf back. Sebastian Ecker. And now Sebastian Ecker will be the batter. Ecker, 15 out of 49 on the season with 11 runs batted in. If you're wondering, Alex Diaz, the three-hitter, leads the team. He's got the only three home runs they've hit this season. And home runs could be something here. 
next, uh, Mendham have hit five as a team, the leader being Jack Leo with two. A bunch of other guys have one apiece. And we say that, and there's a throw to first, but not much of a lead that time for Owen. We say that because it's 315 down the right field line, 317 down the left. That bunt is fouled back to the screen to count nothing in one. It's 402 to straightaway center field, where the American flag is ever so graciously flapping in the breeze here, which is a wonderful breeze, a beautiful night for baseball. Temperature was in the upper 70s driving in. It's about 76 now. Just an absolutely gorgeous night for a baseball game. That's a swing that's gone too far, and it counts nothing in two. I agree. There we go. Some oh, ambience. I knew I forgot something. <laughs> it's 0 2 now. Pitch up and away, and count 1 and 2. Bring that down just a little. Of course, you can hear the cars going on 287 in the background, but just a few clouds in the sky. Outside of that, just brilliant. Swing and a miss. Eckers down on strikes. First strikeout for Cal and there's one away. Now batting number nine, Matt Healy. So now Matt Healy, the batter. That's for himself. He only five for 20 on the season, but he's got five runs batted in. He's also scored four times. First pitch up and in. A little bit of a back out of the way there. Matrix style. The count's one and up. It's got to be something for the for the uh, these players and the kids. Uh, their, their pictures are up on the, the Jumbotron there out in right field. Oh, yeah. Playing in a minor league baseball stadium. That's grounded foul. Some of these Yankee fans, of course, you would imagine. And, um, you know, being able to play in a ballpark of a minor league affiliate of their favorite team has got to be something as well. And if there's some of these guys are seniors. Yeah. I, I'm, I could be wrong, but one of some of them have played with An against Anthony Volpe at some point. It's possible. That pitch stays out of the strike zone to count two and one. I, I don't remember. Did Vol Volpe went and played at, at Vanderbilt though, didn't he? So I probably not. Let's throw back to first. Mendham doing their 50-50 raffles here. With some of the moms going around the building. Here, runner goes. Pitches off the plate. Throw down to second is yep. in time. Two four caught stealing. And there's now two away. Oh, hey. Oops. <laughs> I probably because I shut it off. Yeah, I shut off the thing. Oops. After all that, after that other debacle from before, I made sure I shut that thing off. This one hit into right field for a base hit. And so Healy gets on base. And it's the second hit of the game. Now batting number 45, Joe Bartnicki. Joe Bartnicki now to the plate. Courtesy runner, number 20. With uh, Healy being the pitcher. So it's Gavin Drown. At it. So Gavin Drown takes first base into, into the batter's box. Here goes Joe Bartnicki. It's only his fourth at bat of the season. He's done well so far, two for three, but then cuts right through that pet, uh, fastball, and it counts nothing to one. Not for long. Not for long after a swing like that. Got a long. You got a. I think he tried to try to catch up late, or something. Didn't look great there. Got fooled, I think. Yep. You know, one pitch misses, and the count one and one. Sometimes you just have to stop yourself for a second, and 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 then come back, take a pitch, take a breath. Throw over to first, but back safely that time is healing. Keep in mind, too, 
They're playing in a minor league stadium. It's not like they're playing at the schools. So yep. I think everybody's going to want to take that little extra donkey hack early and I, on. And I'd like to think most of these kids probably have at least come here to watch a game at some point. Right. So that pitch drifts outside, counts two and one. Shadows will start to factor in now for the next couple of innings as they are between the mound and home plate. And we do we do want to also keep that open. Runner goes, pitches a strike, throw down to second, not in time this time. That's a stolen base. Uh, that's for Gavin Drown. Sean and I, this is the first time we've been in the booth together. Yep. Nope. This is lifted in the air, right side, foul ground, and it'll run out of room. Leading off of second is Drown. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He missed low and away. Try to go with a breaking ball and missed, and the count's full, 3-2. and two. Drown marks his lead off of second. It's a pretty decent size lead, too. Payoff pitch. Fouled off, and Bartnicki stays alive. So Sean and I, we haven't been in a baseball booth in the same room in the booth together since last September. Maybe last September. Oh, probably. Probably from minors. Right now, probably up in Quebec. Probably. Uh, yeah. Here's a look back at seven, uh, second, I should say. Another 3-2. Fouled off again. Mm. Good battle going on here. And I think Cato wanted that. I think Cato thought he could have had that foul tip catch and just didn't happen for him there. So we'll do another 3-2. I say that because Sean and I get to go up to the newly named Clover Stadium tomorrow. Oh, it's that. No, it's owned by that now. Mm -hmm. Outside with a breaking ball and drawing a walk and a good at bat at that is Bartnicki. His patience is his best asset, that's for sure, because that first, he didn't have a great first swing, but then he really stepped it back up and really sh and really showed out uh, with, with a couple of really good swings. And uh, eight pitch at bat there. Gives an opportunity for the first baseman. Some bop, perhaps. Michael Ferry, 11 for 45 on the season with six RBIs. All 11 hits have been singles, and he fouls that off nothing to one. Yeah, out in front. Swung early on that one. He thought he saw fastball, and I'll tell you what: if he had, if he guessed that one right, this could have, this at the very least could be down the left field line or even in the gaps. He was on it. It just there's some good room in the gaps there. As the outfield is playing shallow, as that's fouled off to the right, and the count quickly nothing and two. All three outfielders playing shallow. Normal. Uh, Sean and I say this because usually we're used to seeing the outfielders playing deep unless this is like to, to try to cut off and run. Mm -hmm. Thing is, is if you gap this, there's going to be a lot of players running. If this is gapped, it's two runs. No two pitch. Just missed outside with a fastball. That's a good pitch. That was an excellent pitch that time. But it doesn't matter. And, and you know, I think it's it's it's. It's lost. In, it's lost in the shuffle sometimes. Pitches like that, even though it's not a, it's not a strike. It's not. A, you don't get a call. It's still. It's a great pitch. It's great yes. O2 pitch. This is hit in the air to left to the left side. Coming under it is Ryder, the third baseman. He'll make the catch, and the side is retired. Two hits, two left. We've played an inning and a half. Still scoreless. <laughs> there for them we're here for you get back the life you love 
If you've ever been around bad leadership, you know it right away. Find out what it takes to be a great leader in the book, Don't Wait, Lead Now by Jim Lord. Filled with real world experiences and lessons that you can easily apply to your own situation, Don't Wait, Lead Now will help you become a more effective leader, whether in business, family, or life in general. Start your leadership journey and reach your full potential. Learn more and order at don'twaitleadnow.com. That's don'twaitleadnow.com. Our goal at Reiner Pump Systems has been to provide customers with the best quality pumps and packaged pump systems that have solved their water and wastewater problems. We have been successful at satisfying our customers through honesty, hard work, engineering, fair prices, and outstanding customer service. Our greatest asset. Back here at TD Bank Park. In a scoreless game heading to the bottom half of the second inning. I want to thank the boosters of both Central and Mendham. The Battle of West Mars now here. For Mendham, number 16. For yeah, Jack. just Warming. a speed. Oops. That's all right. But I want to definitely thank them for their support of high school sports, just in general, all the sports here on Mars, Sussex Sports. These games are not possible without their supports. We start the bottom of the second, and Jack Warman, the batter, first pitch is a strike, and the count nothing and one. I'll tell you what, Healy has had himself a pretty economic game so far. Oh, it's the it, it's the droop, Mike. Yes, and well, you keep on covering your mouth too. Oh. Warman hits this one in the air towards center field, but Diaz jogs back, camps under it, makes the catch. And so a woman who was 14 out of 35 going into that at bat is retired. There's one away. Next up, number 13, Brian Rudin. I mean, I obviously could be very wrong with that, with the pitch count, the way that the, where the pitch count is right now. But mm -hmm. in any case, it's very, very economic right now for Healy. He's pitching to contact big time here. Why not? Big park. Well, at least in this sense. Right. <laughs> Brian Reuter is 18 out of 46. He's got a home run and 11 RBIs and takes a ball there. Want to know? Derek Dietrich kind of laughs at that here. I don't know why he's still playing for super sets. Mm. The 1 0. Misses inside. The count's 2 0. There's got to be a sense, you know, playing in a park like this for all these players to have that feel like they're in the big time. Sure. 2 0. He is swung on and fouled off to the left side, clunking around, and I think that's a picnic area. Oh, yeah, that's the picnic area. And it counts now 2 and 1. Ball heading back in. They haven't changed down the left field line, but when they transition to affiliated ball, they pretty much removed the lawn seating, which unfortunately was like something was like a favorite of mine to go to, mm. especially in my older years. Not as a younger, not as a youngin, obviously. But two one coming in, it's outside for a ball. The counts three and one. You can see the shadows. They're even giving our camera a little yeah. bit of a thing. I was I was gonna say, um, for I think I got distracted, I interrupted by the play. There, it, there's gonna be there's gonna be a little bit of a of that going on. So nice line there. drive left field, pace hit. One hop played by Smith back in, and the first hit for Mendham now on the board. His Reuters got himself a single. Mendham, number 10, Sean Haddow. Let's see here. Yeah, that pitch missed up. You can, tie, you can sell even in the shadows. The catcher set up low, and the pitch missed up. And that's just a that's just good hitting there by Reuter. So now Sean Caddo to the plate, 11 out of 38 on the season. No homers, eight RBIs, three doubles on the campaign, and that's uh, a ball, 1 0. What's the 39 for his statistics? The 39 for Cato's statistics, 38 at bats. I don't see a 39 for him. Oh. This is his 39th at bat now. That's interesting. Pitch, runner goes, strike on the outside corner, throw down to second, not online, and it's a stolen base for Reuter. Breaking ball. Good pitch to throw. Good pitch to run on. 
for Reuter, by the way. We'll get that stolen base number in a moment. That's his fourth now as that curveball stays outside. The count now two and one. Sean Cato, Halverson Cup champion. That's right. Boy, was that team good this year. That that Halverson final was amazing how they played that game against Marstown. They played a great game. Breaking ball is in for a strike and count now two and two. You know, and it's interesting because obviously Morristown has a higher uh, enrollment, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. A, high, a bigger student body in, in a way but to, to mend them. So when you're the little or when the smaller school in this in that situation, it's always nice to beat the the uh, the powerhouse, if you will. That's outside and count now full three and two. And considering that Morristown dropped down from the men in division and was so dominant in the regular season. Nobody saw that coming except for Mendham. Well, Mendham had Mendham had star power. That's what they had. Here's set. Look back. Payoff pitch coming. And it hits him. Curveball. Everybody, everybody wants to get wound up about it, but that was a curveball that just laid on his shoulder there. No, no, four. sir. That's number four. That that that's that that was um that was his teammates on there telling him to run it, to run hard. That's called the hard ninety. Mm -hmm. And he's the he's a catcher. That's not that's not gonna hurt him. And he, and he's also a hockey player. Definitely not gonna hurt him. No. The only difference is you can actually rub dirt on it here. You can't do it on the ice. No. Nineteen running at first base. Number nineteen is Quinn Con uh, Contelli. Quinn Contelli is now on. Frank Violet, the batter, nubbed that one foul on the third base side to count nothing in one. Violet hitting eight for 31 on the season, 10 RBIs. So he'll get some work done with the stick, knocking runners home. He's got two on base here with one out, bottom of the second in a scoreless game. Runner goes to third, swing and a miss. They're going to throw down a second, though, and that's plenty good. So Poor Will. He got it, caught in no man's land there. Might have been a missed signal somewhere. So Raider with another stolen base. He steals third, but they opt to go down to second and get the out there. That'll be a 2-4, I believe that is. What, steal? This pitch hit hard, but foul, third base side, and we'll do it at 0-2. i tell you what, that breeze that just might whip around a little bit in here, it's gentle, and it's just really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 0-2 oh, pitch. Curveball fouled off. Mm. There's another one. This time, the catcher... The West Morris catcher, uh, Raleigh, there again, just this next half inning. There's a foul tip I think he wanted to have in the glove. Just couldn't get it. Better than it looks. Here's the set, and Healy deals. Breaking ball, strike three, and a beauty. Side retired, first strikeout for Healy. And he gets himself out of a little bit of a jam. One hit, one left. As you see that breaking ball come home, we've played two in a scoreless contest. Let's give a warm welcome. Leader in the water and wastewater marketplace. Reiner Pump Systems started in 1998 as a family-owned business and has grown into one of the most respected pump sales force in the Northeast and now Pacific Northwest. Our success has been nothing short of amazing. We are now considered by most the go-to pump house for replacement pumps, big and small. Reiner Pump Systems. Hey, don't you just love it when more Sussex Sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award-winning service that brings you play-by-play -play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, 
real time. So if you want to reserve us for a game, you kind of saw it before. You see the numbers at the bottom as well. Thursday nights at 6 for the wrap-up report. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that subscribe button. Click the notification bell. And if you want us there, 973-713-5944. Book us for your next game, whether it be at TD Bank Ballpark or your high school. Or Men in Arena or whatever other rink. All the information in the lower left. Number seven, Sean. We appreciate you watching this broadcast tonight. We're scoreless as we go to the third. Sean Smith to lead things off. Smith is 12 for 43 on the season. A pair of doubles, a pair of RBIs. He's walked six times and takes a ball one and up. Calather has... Wind up in the pitch, fouled off in the count now, one and one. 30 pitches, uh, 31 pitches, I should say now, with a one ball, one strike count. That's according to what I have. Hmm. But it's fr it, it's close. That's close to it. Might have missed one or two. Yeah, it, it happens. One, one pitch. Swing. Oh. And miss. Breaking ball. Yeah, and he, Smith see, knew that this pitch was going to be a strike. And he just tried to emergency hack, try to see if he can get the bat on the ball. Doesn't get out of there either. Strikeout number two for Calter one away. That's great sequence right there. Mm. Yeah, you, you got him. You got him buckled on a, on a breaking ball, making it. You made him bail out basically. Try to get, try to make it, and then high, you know, high heat. Boom. That's it. Simple. You don't have to overthink it sometimes when it comes to this stuff. Evan Turner comes to the plate. He grounded out pitcher to first. Oh. His first time up takes a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing in one. Mm. Turner 18 for 56 on the season. Those 18 hits, fourth best on the squad. To go along with seven RBIs. Takes a pitch up in the zone and the counts one to one. Just out of the zone upstairs, I should say. Yeah, he's liking his breaking ball. Might have been a, his curve. Yeah, that's looking really nice right about now. Fastball missed in the count two and one. One more. Oh, darn. And another. Now it's three and one. There's <laughs> a nice, healthy crowd on hand here tonight. Although the weather has definitely got something to do with that. Fouled off and count now full three and two. Beautiful weather, and I, I, I can. I'm pretty much pretty confident when I say I'm sure a lot of these families are going to go back home afterwards and watch the game, if they're not watching already from the stadium. We've seen that before, and we thank you for tuning in. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts for Calter. There's two away. As Turner chased the high fastball. Now batting. That's his go to to get him out. No true. It's it's about letter high. That he where he throws it, and it really, and especially at this level, you're gonna get guys that think, "Ooh, I could crush this. I could, I could put this on the, on the 287." But first pitch hit in the air, right side, camping under it, and making the grab. This woman in the side is retired. Three up, three down. We've played two and a half, still scoreless. Sierra Mars Sussex Sports. And, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. I've worked with many mortgage companies over the years, from the big banks where I thought I could get the best, most competitive rate, to the small guys where I thought I'd get more personalized service. And I never thought I could have it both until I met Family First. Family First gave me the most competitive rates in the market with unmatched service. Their team is incredible. They were always at arm's reach 
ready to answer my questions, help me weigh different loan options, and work through some of the most challenging closing situations and timelines. I have to say without a doubt, Family First is the best in the business, and I strongly recommend them if you're looking to finance or refinance your home. Have you ever needed a day to relax? Back here at TD Bank Ballpark in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Yeah, this is going to be this inning and probably the next one is going to be the most difficult to if you're watching back at watching it back at home this inning is going to probably be the toughest because we're in between them turning the turning the uh, the lights on and the shadows are going to be a little bit tougher but will schlegel to lean things off 10 out of 33 on the season with nine rbis First pitch chopped to the right side, right to bury at first base. Takes it to bag himself. One pitch, one out. More economic pitching from Healy. Next He's up, getting his contact. Three, Jack Leah. So now Jack Leah steps to the plate with one down. Six out of 29 on the season with six RBIs. He's got two home runs, which leads the team. Brian Contoli, Brian Reuter, and Will Schlegel all with home runs apiece. Is that's a strike, nothing in one. Both of these pitchers have been fantastic. Yep. You love to see it. They're not just throwing, too. They're pitching. You know? Mm-hmm. The 0-1. Breaking ball right back up the middle and through for a base hit. Seeing eye single running through the bag is Leah. And he's aboard. With a one out. Now batting number 17, Noah Asher. Yeah, you're right, Brett. That ball had eyes. Mm -hmm. Right up the middle and great effort. You love to see that, obviously, behind you as your, as a pitcher. And not this time. Back to the top, I think, right? Yep. Noah Asher, the batter. He's He popped out and foul ground his first time up to the first base side. He's 0 for 1. Peek over at first, and now the set here by Healy, and throws over to first again. We had uh, we've had people from Westmarsh Central come up and already say hello to us before the game. It's this one's hit on the ground. It's a soft roller. It's only played a first base on a cross. Turner to Ferry, moving the second is Leo, but there's two down. Smart play. Next up, number 11. Tim Don't be a hero. Rivers. You didn't. You know, you're at two outs now, and the, all the pitchers really got to do is just focus on the batter ahead of them. Right. Tim Winters grounded out to the mound his first time up, pitcher to first. They glance in a set, and now the first pitch. Curveball for a strike. That's a both guys have cur both guys have got pretty decent curves. Yeah. And you know what, too, you know, we've said, you know, some of the some of the batters have stepped in and they've, you know, a little bit extra on the hacks early on. The pitchers with that adrenaline, I'm sure that they're getting a little extra spin on their pitches. Sure. Plus using a professional mound helps too. Because that's a fastball for a strike. A throw back down to second. Good job that time. Uh by Dario to prevent anything from going into center field. I got to give both of these, I, you know, I got to give both these coaches a lot of credit. They have, both of these coaches have taught the game right to these kids. They're, I'm going to use the Keith, I'm going to use the Keith Hernandez one. Both of these teams are using good fundies, mm -hmm. very good fundies. So they, Dottro was the one that made that play at shortstop. That pitch misses and counts one and two. We always like good fundies. These two teams, I they're really doing really well with that. Time called. You see, to me, I think I don't know if that maybe that's a bit of a mistake to me for Healy and for Healy and uh, and Raleigh. Get one strike away here. Just get go to the batter here. High heat. Don't worry about the runner. Secondary lead and a large one. Now here's the one two curveball fouled. We'll do it again. 
Definitely not what Winters was expecting, I don't think. Does stay alive, though. One ball, two strikes, two outs, scoreless game, bottom of the third. Matt Healy looks in for his sign some more. Now he's got it. A glance back at second base a couple of times over, and he almost had the runner picked off. Leah took off a bit early. All you need to do is have a guy cover third on that situation. Let Lee, you can let you should let Leah dance till the cows come home. You're letting him bother you. That's what he's trying to do. Curveball just what was that a fastball actually uh, just missed up high. It had some break to it, and the catcher tried to frame it lower. Missed high. So count now two and two, Tim Winters. Get just go after this batter. Don't there you yes. go. The two two pitch. Swing and a miss. Ran that pitch low and away. Winters down on strike. Second strikeout for Healy. It retires the side. One hit, one left. We've gone through three here in Bridgewater. Still scoreless here on Mario Sussex Sports. Modern acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. Rich Latman, realtor with Keelan Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis, excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. Again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that notification bell as well so you can be alerted every time we go live well, with an event here on Morris Sussex yeah. Sports. Of course, the wrap-up report. T uh, tune in Thursday nights at 6 p.m. For the weekly wrap-up report highlight show. We go to the fourth in a scoreless game, and the first pitch is up high, 1-0 to Alex Diaz, who grounded out to short his first time up. Diaz leads this team in home runs with three. He's got the only three home runs for the Wolfpack this year. As that pitch misses and counts 2-0. and Hey, Brett, you know what they got working next door? Mm -hmm. A Dax Stats computer. Ah, that's a strike, and it counts two and one. So what are you saying? So now I know what it. So now I know what that would look like on top on a board. Foul back near us, right into the booth. Pretty sure it went right into the booth. Yeah. They'll bring that back down to the dugout. Here's two one. Lined in the right center field. That's a base hit. Picking that off is Leo to throw it back in. Diaz is aboard. He's one for two. And the Wolfpack get things started here in the fourth. Next up, number 15, John Rowley. Pitch just hung. And Diaz knew what to do with it. Again, not over swinging it either. Right. And I think that's the most important thing. Up John Raleigh, who is one for one, singled his first time up. So wait, what number is Evan Turner? Evan Turner is number 15. No, he's not. Oh, never mind. That's Raleigh. Uh, I don't know what Turner is. Let me look here. He's batting, isn't he? Yeah, five. Ah, that makes sense. 
Evan Turner, not to be mistaken, from the former high draft pick yes. in the NBA. Square and a bunt, pull back, takes a strike, does it only nothing in one. You might see some stats that pop up on our screens. Basically, it's showing the career at bats for some of these guys. Right. So there's hit right back to the mound. Counters got it. Throws on a second for one. First is up and away and into the dugout. And that might so... be. Are they? Yep. Yeah, they're going to call interference at second, but a player is down. A little shaken up. They do call interference on that, so it will be a uh, one-six-three double play. And there's quickly two down. I think with the way that the way that the second baseman went down, I think honestly, let's see if we can see it. Yeah, yeah I got took out right. his, he took his right foot all out. That's that's a good call. It's a good call. It's a good call. It's tough. Let's see if I can actually go further back on it. No, yeah, he got his leg though. Here. Now batting number 51, Sebastian Here. Ecker. Oof. Yeah, that's that's good call. Very good call. Good camera work as well. Yeah, not bad for the kid, eh? I love it when they just learn. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy that this year. Mm. That's going to be my saving grace, me thinks. Sebastian Ecker now with two down. First pitch tipped into the glove, or it's in and out of glove. Doesn't matter. It's nothing in one. Ecker struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. And he is the right fielder. Right fielder. Step the 0 1. Swing and a miss. Fastball runs on the inside part. And the count, nothing in two. Out front. <laughs> you can tell that. Yep. Here's the 0 2 come. Swing right. and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Strikeout number four for Calder, and it retires the side. A hit wiped down on a double play. We've played three and a half. Still scoreless. New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt. Devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060. Or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. We head to the Morris County Wrestling Tournament at Mount Olive High School as the number one seed Connor Martin from Del Barton took on undefeated Dylan Pasture from Jefferson in the 285 pound final. Pasture did a great job taking Martin to the mat and after a hard fought effort was able to pin the number one seed in just 24 seconds. With the win, Pasture improves his record to an impressive 17 and 0 and takes home the title in the 285 pound division. Here's Kittatinny's Michaela Caruso as the Cougars hosted a pack on Back here for the bottom half of the fourth inning. There you go. We're still scoreless. The game has been pretty well pitched. Oh, very well pitched. This may end up filling up the score. That act, the actual major, the uh, pro boy, pro ball uh, scoreboard five, at this rate. Might still be light up when we get once this game gets to regular at the end of regulation. I can tell you the only thing's off. He's grounded out his first time up. Yeah, I know. It's uh, It's got that feel. Swing and oh, a miss. Man. And it counts nothing in one. Now both of these pitchers are making their opposition, their opposing hitters. Look, honestly, with all due respect, silly. Yeah. And some of them, yeah. The 0-1. 
Reached out, poked it to the right side. Fielded there by the first baseman. And Ferry's throw to Healy was low. We'll see what they rule that, but aboard is Contelli. Uh, if this was the Somerset Patriots, that's a, that would be an E1. And it's, uh, it's an e, it might be an E3. Throw was low. Okay. So E3 goes up on the board, and Jack Warman to batter. Warman flied out to center field his first time up. Breaking ball away, and it counts 1-0. and So you have all the parents and family members behind home plate pretty much. Some scattered down the lines behind their respective dugouts, but a lot of them behind home plate. And then you have the... Uh, the close friends and girlfriends <laughs> right up on the on the net there on each side. Yeah. The students, the co the, uh, the fellow students there. Runner goes, pitch bounced, foul. It's a great jump. Really good jump there mm -hmm. from first base. Count one and one now to Warman. This is your typical, uh, when you got uh, family and friends in a big ballpark, you, sometimes the family member, the, the adults get split from the children for a bit, or the high schoolers for a bit. Good block that time by Rowley, and it counts two and one. But that's the same way at a football game, too, or mm -hmm. basketball game. The parents sit in one part of the bleachers and <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. And the students are in another. <laughs> Sometimes rowdy. Step off and a look over by Healy. There's Healy again worrying about a base runner. I mean this this is more granted because it's nobody out, but man. Breaking ball for a strike and a beauty to count two and two. If you can throw strikes like that, get over a fastball but that, that if you're worried about him running. Throw a fastball. Get a fastball over. Just strike him out, throw him out right here. Why not? Give it a shot. He's going to go, I think. And he does go pitch up and in. Throw down to second is high oh, and not in time. Oh, I thought he was off the back there. Stall base, can tell him. Let's take a look, see. Slid around it. Oh, good slide. Kept the right hand down. Three balls, two strikes, and another step off. He Healy is very much different with his pace with the runner on base. Mm -hmm. He is, he gets very, very paranoid with runners on. And keep in mind, too, there may be some signals from the dugout as to how many times they want to look as that's outside ball four. They may get, a, a lot of coaches will say, you know, that there may be some kind of a sequence as to how often they look back. Or there may not be, who knows. But that's going to do it for healing. As he's found himself in a little bit of trouble here in the fourth. He'll give way. We'll have a new pitcher coming in when we come back. Still scoreless, but Bendham's got two on. Nobody out. And 13 blocks. That's almost unheard of for the season. Michaela averages around four blocks a game as the Cougars continue their winning ways. No stranger to the wrap-up report. Here's Mo Beard's Hollis Humphreys with a two-goal performance against Seton Hall Prep. That would be Hollis's 20th and 21st goal of the season as he's had a great year. But the Crimson would fall short to the Pirates, 4-3. The Wrap-Up Report's Weekly Superstar Shots is brought to you by Sussex County Community College is committed to helping you achieve your educational goals. Applications are accepted year-round with no specific deadline. Apply today to enroll in one of their quality programs and check out their athletic department by visiting sussex.edu or sussexskylanders.com. If you want to catch even more highlights from more Sussex Sports broadcasts, tune into the Wrap-Up Report as we feature top plays and athletes as well as upcoming previews of the teams you want to watch out for that weekend. You can check us out on Thursdays at 6 p.m. right here on more Sussex Sports.
Whether you are a trucker or a landscaper, accountant or carpenter, needing workers' compensation, general liability, or commercial auto insurance, Gladstone Coverage Group has you covered. Gladstone Coverage Group is a one-stop agency specializing in many types of insurance, including life, personal, business, and Medicare supplement insurance, as well as employee benefits, serving many communities throughout New Jersey. As an insurance partner protecting you and future generations, contact Tyler Brinson at 908-698-0477 or by email at tylerb at gladstonecoverage.com and tell him Morris Sussex Sports sent you. If you're not getting the most comfort out of your system, check this out. Like the rest of your neighbors, you want your home to be as comfortable and inviting as possible. It's no surprise with the winter storms around here. The demand for system repairs are way up, which means waiting around for a while for a technician to show up and having to be stuck feeling uncomfortable for a long time, which is why at ICS, we make sure to service your home quickly and so Sebastian Ecker checks into the ball game. And we believe Ek uh, Healy has moved to left field, and that moves Smith to right. And we'll get to all that in just a moment. Yeah, we'll watch him come in. Tidy that Back up. ball gets away to the backstop, and everybody moves up 90 feet. That's the very rare of what I would score a stolen base wild pitch. Because he steals second. And then he goes to third because the ball got away. No, it was two on. It just moved up. Really? Yeah, it was two on. It just moved up. He had such a great jump. It looked like he was he got there before the pitch even got away. That's a tough one. But yeah, I guess if that's I, how you, I, if that's how I, you got to call it. I don't even know if it's a wild pitch. I might have been a pass ball. Mm. Possibly. The one zero. Breaking ball fouled. What in the world is that? Sounds like a freight train. Yeah, that's not. That is not NJ Transit. The NJ Transit's got a very distinct. Ecker, by the way, on the season. 14 and two-thirds innings, 14 hits, six runs all earned. Walked three, struck out 19 for the left-hander. Wow. Curveball fouled off, and with a curveball like that, you can see why. And against a lefty, that's, that's painful to, to try to pick up. Tony Watson was like a good example of that lefty on lefty. He, he had a curveball that just forget it. If that is Healy in left field, he is very shallow for the opposite field. Other outfielders, normal for high school level. The one two coming. Fastball strike three. Beautiful pitch. Big strikeout that time for Ecker, and there's one away. Now batting number 10. Sean Cato. Now Sean Cato, the catcher to the plate. Oh, he tried to take all the way, but I think he even knew it. Just good pitch. First pitch. Just low for a ball. Maybe a little bit outside as well. Counts one and up. Interesting that Assumingly, Healy is still playing. He's He went back out there. He went in to grab a glove and then went back out there. Just don't know if he's left or right. Ah, uh, he's in left because there's a left-handed fielder in right. And not able to make the catch is Smith. And this will plate one. In the score is Contelli, or Contelli, I should say. An RBI single, a little bit of a duck snort variety for Cato. Yeah. One nothing minute man. Yeah, I just that just landed in there. Now batting and four, good job. Frank Bullock. Good job to pick that up with one out, by the way. By both by both runners. I'm sorry, it's Villot, not Violet as Yeah, I was I was gonna say I think it's that my apologies. You wanna say Viola though. It almost makes me think it's Frank Viola. No, I see Violet Pilot, that sort of thing as well. I, I see Frank Viola. Weirdly. Yeah, you could yeah, either. But Vilat to the point. He struck out his first time up. Pitch. Breaking ball stays high one and oh. That's an unearned run, by the way. I can tell he crossing the plane. He reached on an error, so that's an unearned run. 
And then we'll see what happens here in the remainder of the inning. Pitch. Lifted deep to left field, and Healy's going to be chasing this one down. This one hops the wall in the score, warming, rounding third, Cato, and they're going to say, no, it went over the wall. It's a ground rule double. That's going to send Cato back to third, but an RBI for Violet, uh, for Vilat, I should say. Yeah, and you can see that was indeed Healy, by the way. That's one way to do it, I guess. Yeah. And off the bat, you could hear it. It was the oohs and the ahs, right? It was this nice piece of hitting. Nothing to it. Put the barrel on it, and he did. I mean, that thing was scorched. Yeah. Now Schlegel. So it's going to end up being one earned run of the two. So it is three now? No, no, it's, it's uh, oh, it, I'm sorry. No, they, 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 they grounded the first. They got the runner here at the plate. That's out. No, it's still two. They haven't taken that off the board yet. All right, gotcha. Picture to catcher on that one. Fielder's choice. There's two down. Number three, Jack Lee. We'll let them know next door afterwards. Good fundamental play here. Will is getting a crash course on single camera baseball. <laughs> it's Will's not. It is not easy. Will's doing a heck of a job. He's so. doing a good job for for you know, someone that's you know he's asking questions, but he's learning. Mm -hmm. It's great. Her ball hit in the air, center field. The ass drifts on over to the right side, makes the catch. And the side is retired, but a pair of runs come across on two hits, one error, and, and time, two left. Like we go to the fifth, two nothing men to players. Number nine. So if you don't want to spend your winter freezing your butt off, visit our website, icshvac.com. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Midge Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or a refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda at loandepot.com. Your future, it's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major help. With career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success, it's on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall semesters. Back now here, just looking at the score. Oh, my bad. They're Matt trying to. Sure. Yeah. No, they still put three up. It's two nothing. Some tells me Sean's going to go next door. That's a strike. Nothing. It's in the one. same exact one. Mm. Oh, okay. Don't mind me. I'll. I'll, I'll... There's a strike. And that pitch hit to right field, the base hit, heading into the corner. Rounding first and heading the second is Healy. He's not stopping there. It's a leadoff triple for Matt Healy to start the top of the fifth. Trying to help himself out. Probably only going to get the run here. I don't know. 
It's a good jump. Oh, Nobody, great jump. Yeah. 45, Joe he's Martin. making that turn, and it's going to cut off right before he gets there, but you can tell he's getting there without a throw. Right. Good job there again. So they're still trying to sort that out in X-Ray. Well, the here the issue here's the issue. We're in that we're now in the fourth. We're now in the fifth. Fifth, yeah. That third run happened in the fourth, which means they would have to go back to that inning mm. in order to fix that. Oh, they're using the DAC computer. No, they're not. They're using the actual board. Mm -hmm. mm. That's how I know. Since they already moved over to the next inning, that's wherein lies your issue. You have to edit the inning to go back. Right. To that half inning and then edit the runs and then go back. Poked foul right side. So I guess they're going to do it after this half inning. That's question? what Nick Fitz said. Oh, okay. I don't know why I call him Nick Fitz. Because I just remember that his Instagrams, especially during the pandemic, it was amazing what, what, the, uh, what the Patriots were doing here. Oh, nice. Look out. <laughs> Man. Out. That's out. Yeah. Got him again? Yep. Yeah. Really, I really hate to say, Barnicky. That again, he just looked really. Uh, they don't match with that with with uh, with him, but oh, what's what's up here? Uh, I think we're getting a new hitter here, Nick Dargle. Nick Dargle, number six, will step in. It's Michael Ferry's spot. Now batting. Four central, number six, Nick. Dargle. So now Nick Dargle to the place. Give me his numbers in a moment. First pitch stays high. I want to know. Fifth strikeout, by the way, for Calather. Calather's been great. Yeah. That's trying. Uh, it's off the play, I should say, for a ball. Two and zero oh, up high. Here's a set by Calather. The two zero, oh. low and away. Three and zero. Oh. Ferry seems like he's okay. He grabbed a helmet. He's on top of the he's top of dugout steps. In for a strike and counts three and one. So not sure. Not sure either. Dargle fifteen for forty six on the season with nine RBIs, looking for his tenth and fouls it off. By the way, for Healy, it's his first triple of the season. Only second extra base in and a double as well. But getting himself aboard in scoring position 90 feet away. It's a 3-2 count. Payoff. Hit hard to the right side. That's going to get a run home. A throw on the first in time. Good job by Asker. But in to score is Healy. And it makes it three, uh, two to 2-1, I should say. This good productive out, and I, I honestly think it. I you gotta wonder for uh, for Coach uh, Rydell, it may have been a situation of maybe of a of approach perhaps uh, for that change to go to Dar uh, Dargle, um, and if that was the case, it was the right call because that was a heck of a Tom Rydell pulling the pressing the right button. Speaking there. of which, here's another button being pressed. Peter Patrick Jacobson is now batting. First pitch, hit to the left side. It's going to be picked by Winters. The throw is offline. That'll be a single. Wow. Excellent job by Winters. Just couldn't get that throw to line up. Now batting number five, Evan Turner. I want to see what this kid's doing on Friday. <laughs> He's from Mount Olive. Mm. I'm just saying. George, if you're listening, I do. I actually do need. Uh, 
little bit of a chit chat going on right now. Well, maybe. I don't know. Depending if I want to actually try using a certain camera or not. Given it's not exactly great effectiveness when you have a lot of people in the arena. Mm. Breaking ball for a strike and counts nothing and one to Evan Turner, who's 0 for 2. Grounded out and struck out. Shadow's not a factor anymore. The gaps could be interesting. Well, not a gap there. A little roll to second. And a tag will be put on. And now we'll retire the side. But a run back for Central on a pair of hits. We go to the bottom of a biff. It's two to one. Mendham. One of the Central Athletics are on. CCM baseball. CCM volleyball. CCM basketball. Oh, yeah. It's on. CCM's women's soccer. It's on. Nine athletics programs. CCM softball. It's on. CCM golf. It's on. Esports? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's on. CCF, County College of Mars. Go Titans! Hi, I'm Rob Guswell. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. One run, five hits, one error for the Wolf Pack. Two, four, and zero on the Minutemen side. You see the line scoring all there. Brett Luthner, Sean Bretherick. Now batting for men of number Again, want to thank the boosters Noah. for West Mars Central and West Mars Mendham for all of their support. For Mars Sussex Sports coverage of high school baseball, cannot have done it without you. As Noah Asker will lead things off here in the bottom of the fifth. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing in one. Asker 0 for 2. It's popped out and grounded out. Also, again, want to thank Nick Chirillo of the Somerset Patriots here. He's also running and helping run the scoreboard next door. His hospitality and help getting us set up today. I think he is... He, actually, he has to be. He's the exact... He's the Patriots equivalent of Justin. Thousand percent. Uh, something on your microphone. Hold on. There we go. There's a little grass thing. A little dried and dead grass, whatever. Hold on. Nope. Time called before that pitch came in. But that's that's a good that's a good idea right there though. Um, by the by the pitcher. You're in your motion. Just throw the thing. Right. Because man, oh man, if you if you have to stop it between that, it can really mess up your rhythm. So smart job there. The one one pitch coming in. Is low and in, count now two and one. Sebastian Ecker took over from Matt Healy, whose final line is a right it in lefty. Three innings pitch, two hits, two runs, one of them earned. Walked one, struck out two, also hit a batter. This is hit in the air, center field, drifting on in Diaz, and makes the catch one away. Next up for Mendham, number 11, Tim. Winters. So one down, and it's Tim Winters to the plate, who's grounded out and struck out 0 for 10. Got to figure out the format for this thing for a uh, year or two. Oh, yeah. We'll look into it. Breaking the ball stays high. One and one. See, now, see, now that? That's NJ Trent's. Trust me, yes, that's I NJ Terran. I live up, I, I live like down the street from a, from a train station, so I hear it all the time. It's distinctive. The one oh, lifted in the air, right side, drifting towards foul ground, and out of land, eventually out of play. They followed. Wow, George, if you're listening, George, he's been great. Yeah. 
Caitlin, if you're listening to or watching, I should say. I'd honestly like to have him. I'd like to actually have him come to come to Skylands for a couple games if, mm-hmm. if if ever if he's ever available. One one pitch, fouled off to the right. It counts one and two. Obviously, if he's not doing something for more Sussex Sports, first off, and for, first and foremost, right. It ain't like that. Trust me. One ball, two strikes to count. Ecker comes set at the pelt. Out of the stretch, he will deliver a one-two. Fastball didn't miss by much. Ecker wanted it. It counts two and two. And down away. Or, well, down and into the righty. Still good pitch. Just didn't get the... Uh, Might need to change the iris on this between, uh, you know, uh, open up the iris a bit. That's just that's just the that's just the shadowing. A little soft liner to short. There's two away. I know it's the shadowing, five, but Frank, yeah. The minute that I get off of this out of this chair, the minute that this inning comes to an end, and then everything goes haywire. <laughs> that's the problem. There goes the transit train. Off to the right. Oh, yeah. Uh, double or single? Single. Yeah. At this time of day, it's a single. They only do doubles at the morning and afternoon rush. First pitch skips in 1-0. and oh. Contelli, who is 0 for 2. Grounded out and reached on an error and scored. It's fine with me. One zero, in for a strike and a count one one. That looks a little dark to me. That's, I'm just. I I mean it is, but it's also not like, it, it's it's still pretty visible. It's just the problem is that it's the shading is the problem. One one pitch skipped in count now two and one. I will fix it after this half. Not much of a tweak, just a little bit. Ah uh, well, I know what I got to do. It's just I can't do it right now. Obviously. Little grounder back to the mound. Scooped up there by Ecker. Throws on first in time. Side retired. It's a one, two, three inning for Sebastian Ecker. We've played five. It's two to one. Mendem. And up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes. Back here at TD Bank Ballpark, we head to the top of the sixth in what's been a really good game so far. Now batting for the Wolfpack, number two, Nick Tocho. 
Don't try to lead things off. So, couldn't get it there. Thank you, Sean. First pitch low and away for a ball 1-0. I was trying to figure out where to go, but now I realize where to go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's a strike. Going to count now 1-1 one and one to Nick Dotra. Don't throw for two, a pair of ground out. Uh, no, a ground out and a pop out, I should say. Curveball skied in the air, center field. And Schlegel will get under it to make the catch for the first out. Now batting number eight, Alex Diaz. What's Dotro playing? Dotro shortstop. <clears throat> Sorry about that, shortstop. Yep, okay. Alex Diaz, the center fielder, is one for two. Ground out in a single. Some history today in Major League Baseball. As that pitch is up high. More history? Yeah. What happened? Um, Christian Yelich hit his um, third career oh. cycle. As that's lifted in the air. Deep left field back at the wall. And it hits off the wall and a fly. Diaz did not miss a home run by all that much. He stands on second with a double. I think he liked that one. I'll have to Number 15, see if I can grab that one. You had him chasing forward. back. But that's an easy double right there. John Raleigh, the batter, is single and bounced into a double play. Runner's interference to necessitate that. First pitch gets the outside corner for a strike, nothing in one. So Yelich hit his third career hit for his third career cycle today. Which what? ties a major league record, apparently. For most cycles? Yeah. Like runner goes, pitch foul back. Like you mean like cycles in a career? Yeah. You You mean to tell me that the record is three? Apparently. That's it? You mean to tell me guys like Tony Gwynn? Pete Rose never did it more than like three times yeah. in their career. Wow. Back to second on a throw, but diving back safely is Diaz. Good move. That's incredible to me. But that also, I think, should remind everybody. Yeah, he may not be playing. He may not, statistically speaking, be playing to the level that he'd like to be. Christian Yell is still a fantastic ball player. Line drive is going to be a double play. That was hit right on the nose, but right to Winters, who was heading towards the bag already. It's a six unassisted double play, and it retires the side. A double is wiped out on a double play. And there's the replay. 2 1 Mendham as we go to the bottom of the sixth. By throwing out all the garbage and the appropriate trash and recycling bins throughout. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's going to help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue that allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine, ligament injuries that would normally. Again, tune into the wrap up report Thursday nights at 6 p.m. right here on Mars Sussex Sports. Highlights, reviews, previews, everything going on. 
the world of sports in Morris and Sussex counties and parts of Morris as well. Morris Sussex Sports Wrap Up Report, Thursdays at 6, right here on Morris Sussex Sports. Zach Warman leads things off. He's flied out, walked, and scored 0 for 1. So, yeah, the Cincinnati Reds suddenly have learned how to play baseball. They won today 14 11. But, as that pitch is in for a strike, nothing in one. But Christian Yelich hit for the cycle again. He becomes the sixth player in Major League history to hit for three cycles in their career. And no one's done it more than three. Nope. I'll give you the names in a moment. That pitch is low and away for a ball. That counts one and one. I said off air. I said off mic. That's just one of those don't forget about me moments. Because remember Christian Yelich. Mm. Didn't he win the MVP at one point? He won an MVP, didn't he? Did he? I think he did. Breaking ball, first strike, and a count one and two. Hit a ground rule double in the top of the first, a 372-foot homer in the top top of the third, a single in the fifth, and then the ninth he tripled to start. It was part of a six-run rally, and it fell short. One, two. High pop foul. This will get out of play. 2018. What? Now, we he followed that ball to the extreme. Mm. <laughs> he had the ball right, right in front of him that came, came, came across. <laughs> yeah, 2018 MVP, Yelich. By the way, uh, also in this game, um, the Brewers became the first team. So that pitch bounces in two and two. The first team this year to score 10 or more runs and still lose the game. 53 times the team that scored 10 runs won it. They were 53-0 going in. Now it's 54-1 because the Reds also scored 10 runs more than. Give you more interesting stuff in a second. That's a swing and a miss, strike three. Down on strikes is Warman. It's second strikeout for Ecker. Number 13. Brian Reuter. Brian Reuter, the batter, he singled and was the other strikeout in the fourth. Comes in with the heat. Buy him. At all number one. So Reuter to the plate. By the way, here are the others. Is that slow for a ball one and oh? Long John Riley, which had to be in the 1800s. Must have been. Bob Musel, part of that Murderers Row Yankees team. Babe Herman. Adrian Beltre and Trey Turner. Mm. Curveball stays high and counts two and them. So obviously, um, uh, last I checked, I don't think Long John Riley, Bob Musil, or Babe Herman are going to do it anytime soon. Gets a fool. Turner, Turner could. Beltre, I think. Uh, I don't think he's getting there. Bel- Beltre's Beltre retired, didn't he? I'm just. I'm. I'm being a little facetious. Fair enough. A soft liner now, one hop to short, gathered by Docho. Throws on in time, and there's two and one. Uh, uh, Trey Turner is the only other one that can possibly do something. Now batting number 10, Sean Pato. Oh, it wasn't in the... Uh, this is in the 1900s, so who knows what happened in the 1800s. I fly ball. I'll get foul in the play. And the count, nothing in one. Uh, the scoreboard button might be a little twitchy. It's showing three outs, but we know there's two. What? Oh. You can edit. Oh no, no, that that's um. I'm sorry. That that, that is that was uh, 1890s for the Long John. Here's the old one pitch. Time's going to be called. So Yelich, though, of all of those, the first player to ever hit three cycles against the same team. Oh man! Cincinnati's been his victim all three times. Nice. Foul back. Whoa. 
And you can see the scramble for the ball. Supposed to give that back, but I don't know if they're going to do it. Here's the set by Ecker. And the 0-2. Just missed inside with a fastball, one and two. Yeah, he wanted that one. So now to look in in the set, it'll be a one-two coming from Sebastian Ecker. Pitch. Lifted out towards center field, but it's going to be right at the end. So he makes the catch, and the side is retired. Three up, three down. We go to the seventh. Last chance for the Wolf Pack. Down 2 1. Recovery periods gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. See the line score there as we head to the top half of the seventh inning. And Jay Callather trying to finish off what he started. It's, he's had a really good performance here today. He's allowed six hits. He's walked one and struck out five in the process. But this has been a well-pitched game today. Brett Luthner, Sean Bretherick here on Mars Sussex Sports. So glad you can join us for this one. Bless you, Sean. Sean's got the sneezing going on. Oof. Ah. Mm. I don't know that can... Sebastian Ecker, Matt Healy, Joe Bartnicki are the three to up. But that's not who will step to the plate. As we have here the number 17. Now batting for the Wolfpack, number 17, Jacob Harrison. As you hear in the background, Jacob Harrison comes to the plate. Harrison, three for 15 on the season. And this is headed back and actually oh. hit our tripod. It's strong tripod. What's that? It's strong tripod. It's Manfrotto. Nice catch. So there you go. That's why I <laughs> bought. That's why I bought Manfrotto's. Count nothing in one. Swing and a miss, and a count nothing in two. Now to Jacob Harrison. Here's the look in the wind and the two strike pitch foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. Just a gorgeous night for a baseball game, and it's been a well played game. Very. That's up high and a little bit outside. It counts to now one and two. Here's the wind, the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball away. There's one down here in the seventh. Now batting number nine, Matt Healy. Breaking ball down and away, as you said. That's good pitch selection and good execution. So now here's Matt Healy, who's two for two. He's singled and tripled, scoring the lone run for the Wolfpack. Takes outside for a ball one and up. Oh. 
see the number down below if you want to reserve us for your next game as that curveball was swung out well in front by Healy. The count now, one and one. So again, you want to reserve us. You get the number down below. Here's the one one. Poked out towards right field. It's three for three for Healy. They'll take him being on first base, but rather than third anyway, but right. We got 973-713-5944 is that number as you see the replay of that single. It's a good stroke. Yeah. Or right to George at MarsSussexSports.com as well. Get done that one. Here's Joe Bartnicki. Courtesy runner coming in now. And Gavin Drown will enter the fray once more. He swiped the bag back in the second. Excuse me. It's my friend's birthday. Could you announce it? Next letter over, my man. I've done that. I've had that. I've been there before. Yep. <laughs> a throw back to first and diving back is drowned. I wish this game would go nine. Right? Honestly, this is one of the rare occasions. That's a strike and a count nothing in one. Rare this is one of those rare occasions where I wish a game will go nine in. This this has just been so well played. And that's credit to the, both of the coaching staffs, Tom Rind uh Tom Rindell. And that's a line drive base hit in the left field. Moving up to second drown, two on one out. Let's take a look, see here. And we'll see if Eric Dial is going to make a move. And there's uh, going to be another courtesy runner. Bart Nicky or uh, Bart Nicky's going to come off. And heading out there is, we'll see who, but that's going to do it. We're going to have a new pitcher coming in. think uh i don't know uh, down uh, Ritter's down on in one knee right now calendar is still on the mound he went out to check at first and then he went to the mound so that might have been Ritter on the dive meanwhile there's gonna be another courtesy run i saw the number 35 35 pop out there which I think was one of those numbers that were written in. Let me see if I can get you mm. that. <laughs> Michael Ferry does have the bat in hand, so he will come to the plate. Owen Warman. Okay. W O R M A double N. Yep, got him there. So, Warman is in. And they'll now stay with Calther. Number 33, Mike Perry. Now, Michael Perry, who's 0 for 2, popped out, grounded out. The ground out scored a run. Two in scoring position with one out. And a fake back to first. That is a ball, and it counts 1-0. and oh. No swing on the check. 2-1 Mendham, top of the seventh. But the Wolf Pack have two on with one out. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. Ooh. Fastball runs right by and counts 1 1. Challenged them up and in. Not bad for a guy that's in the, that's throwing in the 80s now with his pitches, his count anyway. 
time called before anything can go forward. Mendham scored a pair of runs in the fourth inning. An error, a walk set everything up. A single and a double knocked the runs home. Central got their run to the top of the fifth on a triple and then a ground out. Swing and a miss, another high fastball, and the count's one and two. Now, does Cal Calither go back there? I think he does. He hasn't caught up to the first two. One, two. He went up and away again, but this time laying off of it was Ferry. The count two and two. There's a different batter in the on deck circle. Now it looks like it's. I'll see you in a moment. This is hit in the air towards center field. Schlanger's coming on. He'll make the catch, and there's two away. And the Wolfpack down to their last out. And it's the number 27 of Patrick Jacobson. Number 27, Patrick Jacobson. Got to hit his last time. Yep. So he'll give it a go again. In this case, a base hit's going to tie the game. Jacobson singled in the fifth. So who's on second? It's Gavin Drown on second. Yeah. It's Owen Wortman on first. Drown's got good speed at second base. Well, at least we know who's on first. Popped foul ground right side, but that'll get to the seats. What in the world? A scramble for that loose ball. <laughs> and then the kid flexed on it. Oh, I thought the kid was about to jump down the, to the down to the tunnel. No, like, what are you doing? I don't think so. That wouldn't be a good idea. The O one line drive center field. Is it going to fade? Yes, it does. Base hit. Rounding third is drowned. He'll score. Game is tied at two. Then the ball gets away. Moving on to third is Wartman. He rounds third. Throw to the plate, and he's caught in a run down. Trying to get back. He's tagged out there. But the game is tied. An RBI single by Patrick Jacobson ties this thing at two. But then the tag out ends the inning. We will go to the bottom of the seventh. Game not over yet. Tied at two. Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. keeping score at home some of you might be there was a single all runners uh the uh that scored gavin drowns it's an rbi single for jacobson warman and jacobson both advanced extra bases on the throw home and then two to one on the now put out that gets warman at the plate number four frank Vallot. Frank Vallot to lead things off. Struck out. Doubled home a run.
By the way, I believe yeah, Patrick Jacobson's in right field, by the way. First pitch coming into the lot is a strike and a count nothing in one. Here's the set. Ecker delivers. Breaking ball lifted to the right side, but right to Ferry. And right on the line, makes the catch one away. Number one, Will Slagle. Will Slagle now the batter. He's grounded out twice, once into a fielder's choice. First pitch coming in. It's foul back to the screen to count nothing in one. 2-2 two -two game as we play here in the bottom of the seventh. So towing the rubber once again, Sebastian Ecker, who's come on and you know, gave up a couple of hits in that fourth inning with his uh, since then pitched really well. Curveball high into the backstop and counts one and one. Just a bit outside. Try well, the corner. Yeah. Two runs, eight hits, one error on the central side. Two runs, four hits, no errors on the Mendham side. Here's the one one. Swing and a miss. Fastball. And it counts one and two. Now they're not worried about darkness here. No, don't have to worry about that. Got plenty of ability to keep the lights on. Here's the one two coming. Strike three, outside corner, another fastball. That's two away. Third strikeout for Ecker. Look at this placement here. Oh. Yeah, that is <laughs> yeah. Had a little yeah. late life to it, too. So two down for Jack Leah, who singled and flied out. He's, 0 for, he's uh, one for two, I should say. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Curveball. And a count, nothing in one. Looking for the sign. Now he's set to go. And the 0 1 to come in. Hit one, two hops to third. Gathered by Turner. Throws across the diamond. In time. Foot stays on the bag. Good split by Ferry. Side retired. Three up, three down. Ten in a row retired by Ecker. We got bonus baseball, folks. Off to the eighth we go. Tied at two. At Madison Tire and Auto Repair, LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. We offer a variety of products and automotive services to enhance your vehicle's performance. Our mission is simple. We never promise more than we can deliver, and we always give the customer more than they expect. Because at Madison Tire and Auto Repair, LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. Please call us for a quarter service question at 973-377-1915.
You're there for them. We're here for you. Get back the life you love. Connor Villalobos is the new pitcher. The junior comes in. Two innings pitched on the season. No hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. be interesting a situation like this where he's going to be in a situation where he hasn't really pitched all that much in a big spot now batting for the wolf pack number five evan turner you'll get evan turner the first one brett thank you very much evan turner to lead things off seven innings for gal for calipter and the first pitch is a strike nothing one a little bit of life on that thing mm. Seven innings pitched, two hits, eight runs, as that's fouled off. No, I'm sorry, eight hits, two runs, I should say. Both of them earned. I think he was one walk in six strikeouts. That was the case. Pitched well, but the Wolfpack got the runs when they needed. Breaking ball stays up high in the count one and two. Turner is grounded out, struck out, and bounced into a fielder's choice. The one two. The curveball stays high and counts two and two. Now we'll see if they come back with a fastball here. Yeah. You'd imagine it going to. Uh, I think so. that's the best pitch. Clearly. Two two. Stays high with a fastball to count full three and two. Tom Rendell of West Morris Wolfpack, the head coach, with Jim McDermott assisting him. Eric Dial on the Minutemen side with Shane Reardon and Phil DiApolito assisting him. That's a walk. 0-2, oh, and a walk worked out by Turner to start the eighth. Good at bat there. Now batting number two, Nick Dotro. So Nick Dotro to the plate. Is Bobby calling you? No. All right, they may be calling you too. So Nick Dotro now, he's 0 for 3. He's grounded out and popped out. Grounded out, popped out, fly out, I should say. Bill Lobos looks in, gets the sign, and throws on over to first. Token throw, just to keep the runner honest. And Jay Transit coming by again. Yep, probably going back that way now. Coming from Highbridge. First pitch is a fastball up high and counts one and no. I don't know. That might be coming in. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's coming in. Don't let your ears deceive you. Pitch is upstairs and it counts two and oh. Another fastball. And that'll get a trip to the mound. Oh, you're right. My ears were... Oh, both ways. Oh. <laughs> we're both right. <laughs> okay, yes, I like that. That works for me. <laughs> It's always good when we're both right. <laughs> They're both blasting the horn. Of course, there is a stop right around here. So. Yeah, there's a stop right just beyond the wall, beyond the center field wall. Train has stopped going towards Sean's house. That pitch missed. Yeah, it's 3 0. And it counts 3 0. Lobo set, squaring the bunt, pulling back, ball four, two on, nobody out. Danger, danger, danger. So back-to-back -back walks to start things off, and the most dangerous of Wolfpack hitters is at the plate. Alex no, Diaz is grounded out, no, singled, and doubled. Alex, First pitch, hit on the ground a short. Good pick by Williams on the second for the force out. For Winters, I should say. 
Six for excellent pick by Winters, one away. Number 15. And now John you want to talk Rowley. about someone who's snake bit right now. John Rowley's one for three. He had a single in the second, but he grounded into a double play in the fourth and lined into a double play in the sixth. Trying to avoid that here. First pitch, good block that time behind the plate by Cato, and it's 1-0. Yeah, well, this still got the runner to move up. But, yes, good block because that, at the very least. Might have to change the iris again after this half inning. I don't know. Oh, I think it looks fine to me. Uh, it's fine to me. I don't know. Infield drawn in. Two two, top in the eighth. Wolfpack were down two nothing, but clawed their way back in. Nice grab wow. by Cato and the count two and oh. Ron Cato used to blocking shots in hockey too. Some of them at least. Oh wow. It's a little things. Mm -hmm. Tiff Smars playing some hungry again. Popped up. Not gonna be right field. It's not deep enough. Making the grab is Leah, and the throw comes home. Two away, and Rowley hands on his helmet as he jogs back. And now. Now batting number 51, Sebastian Ecker. Ecker. Comes to the plate. Back in the game, of course. You're, you're allowed to re-enter. And Ecker, looking to pick up the RBI here, struck out twice, 0 for 2. And then a step off there. There is the set. First pitch upstairs and another excellent grab guy by Cato. That pitch is outside and count now two and a. There is a base to put this batter, Harrison. I think Healy's on deck. He is. So you got the current pitcher and the and the starting pitcher. That's a strike. Going to count now two and one. But this is the guy you want to attack, Brett, because the guy on deck is three for three. Right. <laughs> you, right. You don't want to get. You don't want to get to him. Two outs. You got to go after him here. Outside corner for a strike, and it counts two and two. Great pitch. That's his, that was his best pitch he's thrown all this pet uh, he's throwing out so far. Now can he do it again? Two two. No. Nope. Missed it up high. And the count now full three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. Hit in the air towards right field, and it's going to go over the head to the wall. In to score Turner, in to score Diaz. Rounding second is, is Ecker on his way to third. He'll slide and is safe. Wow. And that will bring out Eric Dial for a little debate. Oh, boy. Oh, he's uh, he's been he's animated. Hot. He's hot. Just a little bit. Let's see if we have that again. What a... I don't know if we're going to get the whole thing. Probably not. Don't have enough. When we're going back on lacrosse, when, when, when I'm set to lacrosse, I'm probably only set to like seven seconds. <laughs> we need more time for baseball. Yep. Baseball needs more time. 
So it's a triple. Oh, hello. How did I do that? Get down there. You don't belong up there. Get back there with your brethren. Now batting number nine, Matt Healy. Two-run triple has made this four to two. Now Matt Healy, the batter. And here's a guy three for three. First pitch off the plate for a ball, 1-0. Oh. Doesn't get easier. And now the, both pitchers have tripled in this game for, for, more, for West Morris Central. Healy's triple. And he scored on it. That started the comeback. And that misses 2-0. Oh. That, that was back in the fifth. That belongs on hashtag arms that hammer. That's hit in the air, right field, long run, Leon dives, and that's a foul ball. Cool. Yeah, you're going to need an iris. Oh, yeah, the iris is there. Just, yeah, just keep tapping it. Here's the pitch. There we go. That's looking nice. Will's done such a great job today. Well, he's, he listens. That's why. That's a strike and count now full three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. Line drive, base hit, center field, going towards the gap and in towards the wall. In the score is Ecker. Pulling in the second is Healy. It's his fourth hit of the game, and it's now 5-2 Wolfpack. Let's just look where this pitch was. Left it up, hung, bang. And that'll bring him home. Wolfpack about to do it again to the Minutemen. Or at least it's looking that way. Their 11th hit of the game, by the way. That's scoreboard yeah. soft by one. It's their 11th hit of the game. 11 hits I've got as well. The crazy thing is, is that Villa Lobos had, a, had two strikes on a couple guys with two outs. And Villalobos will give way. We'll wow. get a new pitcher coming in when we come back. Five to two, Wolfpack. As there's a new pitcher coming on, coming out of the dugout. It's the number eight of Dylan, Dylan Schoenfeld. Back in a moment, Omar Sussex Sports. Leader. You know it right away. Find out what it takes to be a great leader in the book, Don't Wait, Lead Now by Jim Lord. Filled with real-world experiences and lessons that you can easily apply to your own situation, Don't Wait, Lead Now will help you become a more effective leader, whether in business, family, or life in general. Start your leadership journey and reach your full potential. Learn more and order at DontWaitLeadNow.com. That's DontWaitLeadNow.com. Our goal at Reiner Pump Systems has been to provide customers with the best quality pumps and package pump systems that have solved their water and wastewater problems. We have been successful at satisfying our customers through honesty, hard work, engineering, fair prices, and outstanding customer service. Our greatest asset are the people dedicated to make Reiner Pump Systems a leader in the water and wastewater marketplace. Reiner Pump Systems started in 1998 as a family-owned business and has grown into one of the most respected pump sales force in the Northeast and now Pacific Northwest. Our success has been nothing short of amazing. We are now considered by most the go-to pump house for replacement pumps, big and small. Reiner Pump Systems. Well, we'll let you hear that. Jack Warman comes into the game. And Joe Bartnicki. Bartnicki to bat. 
And that's going to move. It looks like Violet has gone to first spin. So we'll try to figure out all the defense in a moment. Team Velot. Velot, sorry. Uh, I said Violet again. That's all right. First pitch, outside corner for a strike, nothing in one. Now you like your purple. I know that. Mm -hmm. Warm in eight, two thirds innings pitched, 11 hits, four runs, three of them earned. He's walked one, struck at nine. Who is this hitting now? It, this hitting would be Bartnicki. As, uh, That's right. Villalobos goes two thirds of an inning. Has life on his on his fastball, but it was just an interesting spot there for sure for him. One one. It's taken outside to count two and one. That's a good pitch. Mm -hmm. It stayed low. It had late break, but a good keep. But Barn Barnicki has shown already that he is quite patient at the plate. Swing and a miss, and count two and two. Due up in the bottom of the eighth is the top of the order. Noah Ashker, Tim Winters, and Frank Contelli. Sorry, Contelli. Pitch. Breaking ball. Beauty, dude. Strike three. Down on strikes, Bart Nicky, and it retires the side. But three put in by Central. Mendham's turn for last licks. Down five to two. Catch your game. Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award winning service that it's brings you play by play commentary. Right live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973 713 Five nine four four. I've worked with many mortgage companies over the years, from the big banks where I thought I could get the best, most competitive rate, to the small guys where I thought I'd get more personalized service. And I never thought I could have. Bottom half of the eighth in a. 5-2 game. Noah Asker. No, same pitcher. Oh, it is? Oh, wow. He had the club on the other hand. Whoops. Why not? I, I, I would have stayed with Ecker, yeah. too. So, that's good. That's good call. Ecker trying to finish it off here. Noah Asker, the batter. First pitch. Is in for a strike. Nothing in one. Asker's 0 for 3. He's popped out, grounded out, and flied out. Five to the score here in the bottom of the eighth. Extra innings here in high school baseball. The 0 1. Fastball for a strike in the count, nothing in two. He does not mess around. Nope. Oh, yeah, that IRS adjustment is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good call on that. It's one of the things as we get used to things, just to make note of. Well, most of the better cameras are automatic. With right. High fly ball, left field, chasing Healy back, and he's camped under it. Makes the catch one away. Gave it a bit of a ride, but I think you want to kind of get the trajectory a little bit lower in this situation. Now batting number 11, Tim Winters. Now Tim Winters to the plane. He's 0 for 3. Grounded out, struck out, and softly lined out. The top four batters in the Mendham order today. Yes, they've scored both of the runs. As the first pitch is a strike, nothing in one. But they're 0 for 12 mm. with one walk, one stolen base. And, but both of the runs scored. Because the reach on an error and a walk were the two runs in this game. 
That hits the bow. That's gonna stick. Right. Yeah. That that wasn't a, that was not a meaty part. Let's just say that. But he's staying on his feet though. Tough yep. kid. Winters will just walk it off and head to first. And now I'll get a little bit of a conference at the mound real quick. So Winters on it first. Five runs, 11 hits, and one error for Westmar is central. Two runs, four hits, and no errors for Mendham, Westmar's Mendham. I don't think they like being called. Now batting number five, Frank Contelli. Just thinking. Oh, well. Frank Contelli to batter. Yeah, they prefer Mendham. Uh-huh. But it is battle of two West Morris schools of the school district. And West Morris has the season series right now in its grasp. Mendham's been given a great season, but nothing changes here. Half of their blemishes would be against West Morris Central. First pitch is a breaking ball for a strike, nothing in one. Because they would go 11-4, and four, and two of those four against the Wolfpack. If this result holds. Correct. But yes. there's still two outs to go. Absolutely. No question. Contelio for three. Pitch. Another curveball mm -hmm. that just missed inside. The count one and one. And it just missed him. Or at least that's what it looked like. He did turn. Well, Contelli's back foot is on that inside line, and he's up in the box, too. We rarely see that. Here's the pitch. Fastball missed low and away. And the count now two and one. Yeah, that's down and away. That just sounds like a Vuvuzela. <laughs> what in the world are you driving, sir? I have no idea, but it needs a little bit of a tune up. You know, the bad thing is, I bet that uh, that's uh, that's intentional. Mm. Swing and a oh, miss. Oh. That was a curveball that stayed up. But unfortunately for Catelli, it's staying too far up. And count now two and two. So now Kurt toes the rubber once more, gets his sign and time called. Mendham. Had the 2 nothing lead after four, but the Wolfpack clawed back a run in the fifth, a run in the seventh to tie it with two outs nonetheless, and then three in the eighth. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing oh. and a move and a sweeping breaking ball, and there's two down here in the eighth. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Bail. Whoa. Brilliant. That's brilliant. satisfying for oh. a pitcher. Let me tell you something right now. When you snap off a yacker like that. Now here's Jack Warman. Pitchers have been hitting very well in this game. Not, not, I'm just saying. Yeah. He's 0 for 2. He did walk and score in the fourth. He's also flied out and struck out. Yeah, but he's the pitcher now. Yeah. Takes a fastball low and in. You count 1 and 0. You get an extra. It's like, it's like the show. You get an extra little. You get a supercharge. Ryan Reuter is on deck. Yeah, hey, yeah they, do, they have that now, you know. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Hey. That's how I learned about Stephen Kwan. Mm. So I'd have on my team any day of the week, mind you. The 1 0 pitch. It's a fastball that misses inside a bit. The count now 2 0. Down, you're up 3. Do you really, are you really holding on a runner at first here? Making a big room. I know it's opposite. I know you'd be hitting it the other way, but yeah, uh, I'm fine with it. Oh. A half holding him, but and then he backs off. Two zero in for a strike, and the count's two and one. This is just trying to keep him close. Mm -hmm. As we've seen, runs can runs can be scored. It's only a three run game, so if it was a seven run game, I might say something different. That pitch skips in. We count now three and one. Mm 
Oh, yeah. Sally. Three balls, one strike, two outs. 5-2, Central leads. The 3-1 pitch. Strike on the inside yep. corner. Yep. It'll give a head start to Tim Winters. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and they won't hold the runner this time. They'll just back off. And you can hear the crowd clapping on the Wolfpack side. What atmosphere. Great. What scenes. The set by Ecker. And time called. And that gets the booze going. So Ecker puts the... Rubs up the ball a little bit and put the glove back on and he'll do his usual and flips it over to his pitching hand. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Ecker looks at first. And now the pitch. Line drive left field. Stings up for Healy. And the Wolf Pack win five to two. I was hit on the screws by Warman. But it hung up enough for Healy to haul it in. And in extra innings, the Wolfpack take this decision by a final score of 5-2. to two. And what was such a good game, well played here at TD Bank Ballpark. I enjoyed this so much, and not only because I came, I came to this ballpark many times as a kid, and I still do now at 30 years old. Um, and... Um, being inside the press box for this at, at this ballpark is something is something awesome. Being able to go down into the into the both dugouts is equally as awesome. The whole experience has been great, and to top it off, just a great game between yeah. two teams and the respect because hey, a lot of these guys are friends. Remember? Yeah, yeah. You know it's, uh, but friends or not, this goes by way of the Wolf Pack five to two. We'll take a quick timeout. Give you our player of the game. When we come back here on Mars Sussex Sports. Family First gave me the most competitive rates in the market with unmatched service. Their team is incredible. They were always at arm's reach, ready to answer my questions, help me weigh different loan options, and work through some of the most challenging closing situations and timelines. I have to say without a doubt, Family First is the best in the business, and I strongly recommend them if you're looking to finance or refinance your home. Have you ever needed a day to relax during these stressful times? Well, then look no further than Modern Acupuncture. Modern Acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. Rich Latman, realtor with Keelan Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis, excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908 839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com What a game here. Final score, 5-2. to two. The music still playing. The, everything was good here tonight. Brett Luther, Sean Bretherick with, with you here. Time for our Mars Sussex Sports Player of the Game. We don't do it. I don't think George gave us a T-shirt today, did he? No, I know. no. All right, so George will will get on the T-shirt at a future uh, honorable mention. 
goes to uh, the starting pitcher for West Mars Central, and that was Matt Healy. He went four for four, two runs scored in an RBI. But when you come on and retire 13 of the last 14 batters to keep your team in the game, even though he gave up the two hits that led to a couple runs coming across, retired 13 of the last 14, striking out four, no walks, and then gets the go-ahead triple, the two-run triple in the eighth to put uh, Westmar Central up to stay. Uh, that's going to give Sebastian Ecker our player of the game uh, here today. Uh, and Sean, I mean, he just pitched brilliantly, especially after they got down 2 nothing. He really just bore down and uh, – Got things going. That's what good pitchers do. Keeps your team in the keep your team in the game, and going in there, uh, just electric. Mm. Um, I thought uh, just did all the right things, and then helped himself out a couple times, a couple in a couple instances, including uh, w- winning this thing basically with the with the triple. So, just just fantastic performance, and a great game. Uh, only could only be one winner, and it was Wes Morris who now is the sole possessor the possessor of the of half of the defeats for the mighty men minutemen final score line once again five runs 11 hits one error for west morris central who now moved to nine and 11 on the season two runs four hits no errors for the men to minutemen who now fall to 11 and four and as sean said they have half of their four losses against the Wolfpack from West Mars Central. Uh, winning pitcher in this one in relief. It's Sebastian Ecker. The losing pitcher is Connor Villalobos. No save in the game. No home runs in the game that took a pretty tidy for an eight inning game. Like two hours and forty uh, two hours and twenty three minutes. Yeah, really nice. It's a really nice game. Really well played. And in the end, the Wolfpack win by a final score of five to two. You'll see the People behind the scenes as they come up on credits here. Uh, Will did a great job on camera today. For my uh, broadcast, yeah, we can't say enough. For my broadcast partner, Sean Brother, I'm Brett Luther. Five to two to final in favor of the Westmar Central Wolf. Until next time, have a good night, everyone, from TD Bank Ball.